so I wanted to talk about uh, how I feel Olimar is uh, post patch. I know I did a video talking about the nerfs, um, giving my general thoughts on them, and things like that. But I've had more time to play it. I've practiced, you know, a lot more. I've done some tournament, all of that, and I feel like I'm a lot more. Uh, I guess qualified now to be talking about really the impact of things, how bad the nerfs were, um, and all that. And to sum it up, I feel like with the nerfs, in addition to the natural uh, either faults of Olimar, maybe things like his disadvantage um, being his weaker area and things like that, that his natural weaknesses compounded with the nerfs, compounded with the weird glitches and other issues the character has on his own, which I'll try and touch down upon. Uh, he feels almost like an not an incomplete character now, but like one who was stripped of what stripped of his his like foundation and now he's kind of left in like a almost broken sense. And I know I, I probably sound really dramatic, but I want to try and explain why. So to begin, Olimar pre-patch very good character. I thought he was the best. Um, not not broken. I thought you know the other top tiers were relatively close to him in power, such as Peacher, Peacher, or Lucina, or whatever it was. But the things that that got nerfed, um, his up smash and forward smash both got, I believe, three more frames of end lag, and that in turn caused them to become one more committal, uh, just overall like in neutral, but also less safe on shield, and that is the big one. You know, previously a sweet spot. Purple up smash would be minus five on shield the first time uh, when you're hitting with the earliest frame, which meant the opponent could act five frames before you. So very specific characters could actually punish that still. Think Lucina, think Mario, up he's out of shield and such. Um, and But every time you would do it, or at least for the first couple times, it would get two frames less safe each time, right? Because it would stale. So I would up smash your shield once, minus five. I'd up smash it again, minus seven. Do it again, minus nine. Um, and that would kind of be the, the general pattern that it had. So using it on shield over and over and over again, just spamming it, was not a vile strategy because it would get so much less safe that more and more characters would be able to punish it. But its standard form was really good because you a lot of characters couldn't do anything about it, right? Um, or it kind of created the mix-up scenario where Olimar dictated. Well, with the patch change, it now became minus 8 with a purple. So you had to have the best color for it. I believe it's also minus 8 with a yellow, so you can also do it with that. What that means is, baseline, now, if you're up smashing when it's fresh, more characters can punish. Um, alright, well, now it's minus 10 after one use. I get one good hit on a shield, and then the options to punish open up incredibly. So many characters have a frame 10 out of shield option, or a way to punish something. Even Olimar has one. It's a forward air neutral air out of shield, both frame 10. Um, so now his primary shield pressure tool uh, is worse, and it's even with the best Pikmin, even when you've managed your Pikmin properly, your reward is all right. Um, it's not, it's not like he gets anything nearly as safe as some of the other characters in this game who have minus two, minus three, minus four aerials um, that they can use repeatedly um, without any. Uh, downside, like they just get to pressure your shield with them. Um, in addition to this, um, the forward smash nerf also took effect. Olimar's forward smash, I believe, pre patch, purple, sweet spot, minus 8, now it's minus 11. A lot of characters can punish that, and that's just talking sweet spot. Um, and the thing is, that's how kind of Olimar pressured in neutral. I know a lot of people like to, you know, rag on him because, oh, he's using smashes or whatever, you know, he's spamming him, that's a neutral, people shouldn't do that, he should learn how to do it. But that's kind of how the character functioned. Um, that's how he's been for as long as you know he's been a character in the game. In previous games, he had his pivot grab to um, assist him in neutral. So he would do a lot of pivot, retreating pivot grabs to catch landings. And that would be all fine and dandy if pivot grabbing, let me show you, with, with three Pikmin has this much animation, this much in lag. Like, I'm holding shield. That is not a viable option to be using a lot. And you could say, well, just don't do it with three Pikmin. Well, then I have to either manually get rid of Pikmin, reduce the range I have just for some less lag. Like, it's it's always trade-offs with the Lomar. Um, and that, that was fine beforehand because he had shield pressure. He had 
a solid way to approach. Like, when he got near the opponent, it wasn't a problem. So, his shield pressure was taken down a notch, and he was giving no given nothing to compensate. And so he's left with, you know, I would call it mediocre shield pressure in the relative, um, relative to the cast. A lot of, I, I, I try to compare to good characters. Obviously, bad characters don't have the same tools, and that's because they're bad, but nobody wants their character to be bad. I don't want characters to be bad. I think everyone wants their character to have some form of safe pressure or some way to consistently play the game without always getting punished. But he's, you know, he gets um, punished for hitting character shield a lot. So he's left with, what are his other options that he can punish shield with? I believe jab 2 is minus 8 as well, but I have to be right near you. So still not super, super safe. Um, and I usually have to get jab 2, so it's not the best. Um, back air forward air. Those can be done if retreating uh, with the right color. I believe they're a bit safer. I think minus five as a back air might be slightly safer, but I, I want to say minus five with a, with a purple back air. Once again, have to have purple. Um, so I have to go through the extra steps to have the right color to get the best I can get. And that's fine. I think that's what all of our players do. They know they have to um, they know that their character has this management element. And that's not a problem. The problem is, where's our reward? Um, so, you know, our smashes aren't safe anymore. What does our neutral consist of? Runaway side B? Try and bait things out? Well, previously we could throw out smashes, um, forward smashes like a, a whiff tool, or make you respect an option, or maybe run under an up smash. And they're still not terribly long animations, but those three frames make a difference. A lot of the times we'd be cutting it close. Olimar is not slow. He has the worst initial dash in the game. His, um, I think, run speed when he hits max run is in the 50th. His air speed is, I think, like 72nd worst. He, he's not a fast character by any means. So you, you can't reliably be pressuring with retreating aerials. Um, you can't be running around constantly boxing people out with a frame 4 jab, which is alright, but not the best. So you're left wondering, well, what do you do? You run away from your opponent. But he's not even fast enough to do that a lot of the time. And... People oftentimes consider him a zoner projectile heavy class and or class character. And that's kind of what he is, but at the same time, unlike most zoners, Toon Link, Mega Man, um Duck Hunt, whatever, Pac-Man, when he side bees outside of a purple once again, he doesn't have knockback, so he doesn't always have a get off of me projectile. Um, which sometimes leaves him with his aerials, which are good. I will admit his aerials are very good. They're all transcendent. Um, when you use them, when you attack with them, I should say. Uh, like, those cannot be challenged. However, unlike a traditional sword character who would have that, you know, transcendent sword hitbox, that disjoint, his Pikmin can be killed during the startup and the end of an animation. So when I forward air, let me show you. When I forward air, that startup, all this startup where I'm swinging, my Pikmin's hurt box before my before my hit comes out, all of my Pikmin's hurt box is active and it can die, and that can allow me to whiff. Same thing with the end. Hurt box gone, or hit box gone. Pikmin hurt box is there. It can be hit. So, and there are times where all my players will go for an aerial, and the opponent will have a hit out, and their Pikmin will die and they'll whiff. So, and the, it's the same thing for smashes. You start a smash um, on the startup of the move, the Pikmin can get hit and die, and you whiff. In addition to the fact that smashes also clank. So, they clank with aerials, meaning they will always lose. No matter what the power of your aerial is, it will always beat out Olimar's smash if they collide head-on. Like, if they overlap, if their hitboxes overlap, my smash clanks the aerial, and you will keep going unhindered. So, he can't pressure shield reliably, because his smashes aren't very safe. He can't constantly approach with, re with retreating aerials... Because they're not safe enough. Um, they're not like a Peach Neutral Air or Palutena Affair. They're like minus 3, minus 2. Purple Bear, I think if you're hitting it, is minus 5. Except he also is slow. So he's can't he can't be moving in and out like these faster characters. He doesn't have like a Peach Hover where he does it and then drifts out. Or like a Palutena or a Wolf where they just get to zoom in and out. He also falls slow. So he doesn't hit the ground that fast. So you're waiting a lot of the time. 
So he doesn't have the tools to be hitting with these aerials. So he would use his smashes, but he doesn't have those anymore. So now he's working super hard to be mixing you up. He has good options when he hits you a lot of the time, but it's landing those hits safely that's the problem. Like his grab, pretty good, but it comes out frame 12. It's not a super fast grab. It's a great grab for when it lands most of the time. It has some issues, which I'll touch down on. Um, but it's like, it's not something you can constantly be using because um, it's also very committal. So by taking away the safeness of his smashes, by, even by changing them by three, um, three frames, you've essentially taken away his shield pressure, his general neutral game, and you've, it's almost made the statement of, you are not supposed to be around the opponent. You, you do not pressure them, uh, in the, like most characters in this game do. But the problem is he's also not given the tools to run away. Like, yeah, he can do some decent camping, but when someone's rushing him down, he doesn't get to get them off of him. He doesn't have a get off of me option. Smashes, they lose. Aerials, they're not the fastest, and he's not the fastest, so they can work if they get out, but they have to get out. So what is he What is he left doing? What is he supposed to do? At least with smashes before, he'd kind of throw them out near you as his close quarter combat options in addition to his jab and tilt and stuff, and they'd be relatively safe, and he could create mix-ups and block strings and things. Now, it's... You have to be even more preemptive. You have to work even harder. In addition to already playing Olimar and managing your Pikmin to get the optimal colors for just the best safeness. Other colors are massively unsafe. I think like a, a blue F-Smash is minus 17 or something like that, sweet spot. Um, most colors that aren't purple or yellow, I think, are minus 10 at like the best. Uh, when they're fresh on shield, a lot of characters can punish that. I don't have an option to hit shield. In addition to that, they made Olimar's uh, F-Smash sweet spot active for half the time. It was originally uh, 11 through 14, now it's 11 through 12. And I can't seem to understand why they did this. Um, not only did they make the move not safe, like you're already going to get punished on shield a lot for it, but they made one of his best kill options just less consistent at killing. So let me show you what that means. Um, but first I want to show you that by them nerfing the um, sweet spot by two frames, they also nerfed purple Pikmin F smash specifically. It is now, it goes less distance than it used to, and I believe they shortened the entire duration of it by four frames. Uh, I, I could be wrong on the exact number, but they also shortened the duration the, the duration of the move. So, not only is it not safe against most of the cast, but it also goes this far. That is almost nothing. So, and I, I'll show you it compared to a blue. That is a massive difference. Um, and to put it into perspective how bad the sweet spot is, I will, I'll, sh I'll show you. So this will kill Mario at 75. Right? Pretty simple. Let me show you the sweet spot now. Or the sour spot now. Oh, one sec. Misspaced it just slightly. Just want to make sure I get it right. That is a massive difference. Um, and it's the same thing for Olimar's up smash, actually. His up smash, very good kill move. It's something a lot of people, you know, a lot of people don't like the move. They're like, it combos, it kills. It was safe on shield a lot of the time before. And it is, it is good. But it also has a ridiculously bad sour spot in that it's very easy to hit. So I'm right in front of Mario, right? Pretty simple. That sour spotted. And did you see how he was at 75 and he went nowhere? And I'll show you the sweet spot. That is a considerable distance difference. There are plenty of instances where up smash doesn't kill until... Or sour spot up smash won't kill at 140-ish. Like, I'm not saying it shouldn't have the sour spot. That's perfectly fine. But I'm saying you have these moves that have the drawbacks of they clank with aerials. Their sour spots are incredibly weak and rather easy to land, especially once the F smash nerf has come into effect. Both up and forward smash are... It's its easy to hit the sour spot. I hit them all the time. A lot of Olimars do, even when you think they won't. So they, they clank with aerials. Sour spots don't really kill for way later percentages. They're not safe on shield. Up smash is safe on shield sometimes, at, at, when it's fresh, and your opponent doesn't have already have a solid out of shield option like a frame 5 aerial or faster, or frame 8 up smash or up out of shield. They 
have to worry. You have to worry about Pikmin not dying on startup, not them not throwing out a move um, to to beat it out on startup, or them desyncing. And all of that is assuming you have a purple, and it's fresh. But once again, you have to use these. These are your moves that you generally use in neutral to stop people. You're too slow to be using aerials, and his tilts not safe. They're not killing t tilts outside of F tilt, and it's a frame 15 startup, and it's unsafe on shield. His aerials, while good, he's slow. He can't be throwing them out all the time, and they're unsafe when he approaches with them. But he doesn't have the speed to always be retreating with them. So the character, who was in a very good spot, in that he worked, in everything worked very well in tandem. He had solid shield pressure. He has, he still has one of the better advantage states in the game. Potentially, you know, even the best of your combos are good enough. Very explosive combos. That wasn't necessarily taken away. The problem is, they made his neutral incredibly risky without, like... Uh, think about it this way. There are three aspects to a character, right? Like neutral, advantage, disadvantage. Olimar, always known to have a terrible disadvantage. Um, that's his biggest area. That, that was his weakness. Before, his neutral, very good. Advantage state, very good. Now it's advantage state, very good. Neutral, it's an uphill battle. It's very risky. You can't pressure consistently. Um, your moves just sometimes outright lose. Um, and that's not even touching down on the fact that his hurt box is now bigger than his model. And his shield doesn't work, which will hopefully be fixed. I imagine that is very much not intended. So shielding is already, you know, scary if you don't tilt your shield up, which I don't know anyone who has successfully managed to retrain their muscle memory to always be tilting their shield up. Um, so I, I can't pressure shield very safely at all. I'm My attacks lose sometimes when I try to use them properly because aerials are so prevalent in the meta for spacing and for pressuring that they just cut through my attacks. I'm too slow to run away from people and properly camp and don't have the projectiles like most characters. My purples, while good, are not an end-all be-all. They lose to moves like my smashes, and they are a resource that can be taken away from me if you kill them when they land on the ground, which most experienced players in the matchup do. And all of this was fine before, because even though he had a weak disadvantage, his neutral and his neutral had, you know, he still had a lot of these flaws, just stuff was safer, because it all worked out. When you played your game right, when you managed your Pikmin, you had pressure. You had a way to, you know, put your opponent on their back foot like they're doing to you. You were rewarded for doing your job, to working through all of the nonsense. I'm talking numerous up B glitches where Pikmin whiff for no reason, or you go into free fall randomly because the game is coded poorly, and things like, you know, your grab randomly breaking because someone hit your Pikmin, you know, 30 seconds ago, and you didn't notice that they hit your Pikmin at the exact time to glitch it. And Pikmin randomly flying off the stage when you roll from the ledge, because they do that sometimes. Like, Olimar is a buggy character, but it was okay because you could mitigate a lot of that before, and you can still mitigate some of it now, but when you mitigated it, he was able to actually do what a lot of top tiers do. He could pressure, he could combo, and he still had his weakness of his bad disadvantage. His up B was really good pre-patch, in that you could kind of, like, you could get knocked off stage, use a lot of fuel, come back, get knocked off again, fall, recharge your up B some, a, a decent amount, and kind of work your way in and out. You were taking all that damage, but it gave you time to, re to like, find an opening strategy. Because you used a move that had no hitbox unless you canceled an aerial, because you can't use cancel the air dodge. But it put you into free fall after. So off stage, it was still very hard, and characters with big hitboxes could still put out these large sweeping hitboxes and catch you. And they nerfed that as well. They made his up B recharge incredibly slowly. So now, if you burn up almost all your fuel, you're almost dead off stage. But the problem is, he needs that up B. His airspeed is too slow to be recovering. It doesn't have a hurt or it doesn't have a hitbox. But you still have characters like Peach, who has a float in her parasol, which lets her drift at slower falling speed and provides protection on the top. Pichu, Pikachu, incredible quick attack, very hard to catch. Uh, what? Let me think. Lucina, decent airspeed, amazing up B, very hard to challenge as well. Wolf, somewhat challengeable. Yes, his hurt boxes or his up Bs also have solid hit boxes on them, though. I know they just toned down up B. But the point is, you had a character who had these very discernible flaws, and he has strengths. I'm not trying to talk the character down or say that he's total trash and he has nothing going for him. He has these strengths. But you had a really complete, well-working character that was balanced relative to a lot of the other top tiers, and he had even matchups versus many of them. Or even some Olimars would say he lost to some of them. And for some reason, they felt the need to strip him of that ability to contend with them. 
without doing it to the other top tiers. A lot of other top tiers lost kill power. You know, Pete's lost fair. They got some lag on some moves, but it wasn't on the moves they were using to constantly pressure you in neutral. You know, Peach Bomber and Turn Up and Pichu Forward Smash aren't the same as nerfing Peach's back air and nair or Pichu's, you know, down air, back air, or tilts. It's not like Olimar, who got a fundamental change to how he has to pressure you now that things are unsafe, in addition to also making his forward smash hit the sour spot more reliably and kill less. He doesn't have a, you just spam this button all the time and you win, as much as people like to think. There was always very definitive counterplay. Um, and many players, uh, from my experience, just will you know, they didn't know it or they didn't try to learn it and they often wouldn't exploit it. But players who really knew the character they could exploit these things. That's why Olimar wasn't winning tournaments all the time. He wasn't some Bayonetta-level character from Smash 4, some Meta Knight-level character. He was good, but there were checks and balances to him. And now with the new patch, you're left with someone who kills less reliably, um, someone who has bad shield pressure relative to a lot of top tiers, so he's getting punished by a ton of characters out of shield, uh, a character whose recovery and disadvantage is even worse when he already had one of the most exploitable, and you're giving no compensation for it, except... No, you're, you're just actually not giving any compensation for it. But you also still have to play a character who requires all of this management, all of this effort in making sure your Pikmin are not desyncing, making sure they're not glitching out, doing all of this, uh, making sure you always have the right color, just to be almost as safe and as strong as other characters who have it much easier. Lucina, Wolf, Palutena. Their aerials are so much easier to space, um in that they don't, like, to be safe with, I should say, and that they don't have to, oh, I have my right Pikmin, it didn't desync. It's like, it's just safe. That's just it. They're faster characters. They're able to weave in and out easier. And Olimar did that with his smashes. And I might sound a little redundant, I'm sorry if I do, but I'm trying to hammer in the point that he had a solid neutral game plan for him where he had some buttons that allowed him to kind of pressure you in neutral from afar, with, like forward smash and such, and then, you know, up smash was a very good pressure tool if you did it with the right Pikmin, so you were getting rewarded for using your strongest Pikmin, and that pretty much was taken away from him and replaced with nothing. So he doesn't have a way to do that anymore, but he also can't run away. So I think with the way he's been balanced, balanced I should say, um, I don't th I don't know what the developers were going for. I don't think anyone does. You could argue free-for-alls or online balance. He was winning too much on quick play or tournaments or online complaining, whatever it is. When the, they over nerfed a character who one had already adequate counterplay for him, but they nerfed him into a point where there wasn't, there's not like necessarily a replacement. I'm not saying he can't win, but I'm saying you already had to work hard to do a lot of the Olimar specific things, which is why I feel there weren't that many top Olimars. Most, or all of them actually, really, were legacy Olimar players. And they said it, it, it was like a slap in the face, and it was pretty much. You have to work harder for less. You're not you're not going to be nearly as rewarded. Like, yeah, you can get big combos. Like, I still do. A lot of Olimar players get big combos, great conversions. But you have to get there. And that is such a nightmare to play now. But getting stuck in disadvantage is such a nightmare now. Because it's so easy to die to the Palutena who ran off and just fell with neutral air and caught you for free. Or the um, Shulk who runs off and forward as you for free. Or the Wolf who, you know, f tilt you at the ledge, you know, one or two times and you're already out of fuel because you got sent to the blast zone twice. It's... It's not... an enjoyable experience a lot of the time. I know that's a sentiment I have, and many Olimars I've talked to, they're frustrated. For good reason. Whether you like the character or not, that's totally irrelevant. I don't think anyone wants to play a character where you're always working hard, and you're never getting rewarded for it. It... It put him in a spot where... Playing him is more stressful than it's worth. And I don't know what what there is to do about it, aside from work harder, but you only want to work so hard when you're not getting the adequate reward for it, you know? Um, I, I recommend anyone who f disagrees with me, uh, try out Olimar. Give him a shot. You'll see what I mean. Fight people who, who are experienced in the matchup. Give it a shot. Like, see how frustrating it is to attack with stuff that's not safe and then attack and then expect your move to win and then it clank with an attack or your Pikmin die or your Pikmin fly off the stage or you run out of fuel because you got hit once. It's it's a frustrating experience. And I understand 
a lot of people wanted Olimar nerfed for whatever reason they have, that's totally valid. You can feel that way about him. But at the end of the day, everyone wants their character to work and to be good and to function properly. I already have to deal with a ton of glitches, and I would love for those to be fixed. But I was fine with dealing with them, because when I did play my best, when I was pushing the limits of the character, I can minimize those glitches and then still be a strong character who could pressure, who could compete. And now I'm a character with a ton of glitches who has to work hard to be worse than all these other characters who don't have any, uh, who have barely any, if at all, sour spots that will stop their kill power, have much safer moves that require no setup like having the right Pikmin, and have no direct counterplay like killing Pikmin or anything like that. And it's a discouraging experience. And I hope the Nintendo balance team or whoever's balancing the game, um, I hope they either see this or look at what the balance change has done to Olimar so that they maybe not restore him back to his exact previous state, but give him some level of buff or care so that he's not, you're, you're not fighting in a constant uphill battle to play him when that uphill battle doesn't reward you properly and it's not a frustrating experience. No one wants to get shield poked when their shield covers their whole body. No one wants to have their, their attacks just die when they parry an attack and then whiff. No one wants their moves to always be punishable on shield and be slow and not have a way to compensate for it, like an amazing command grab. Maybe say, say like Bowser, you know? People want to play their game. They want to feel empowered when they play their character, and that's how Ultimate seemed to approach a lot of characters when this game came out. That's why there's so many, saft fi so many safe, fast aerials, but that Olimar doesn't have that. He, he just can't be doing that. And what he did have was taken away. So... Uh, that that's my thoughts on it. I, I, I mean, I'd like to think he's still a really good character. I think he can still compete in some regard. But as Olimar players fight other people who know the matchup, and are able to exploit Olimar's flaws, it's going to become a living nightmare to play him. It's not. It's it's almost not worth playing him if you don't actually just really really love playing as a character. Because you're working so much harder for for nothing. Just go play Lucina. Go play Palutena. Go play Pichu. Go play someone else who's less work and more reward. It's uh, like... I'm not saying drop Olimar if you like playing. I'm just saying you have to be in for the long haul. And, and pray that Nintendo or whoever's balancing is listening. And that they will actually give the character the care. Instead of ripping away his fundamental strengths. Um, and allowing him to compete with so many characters. Who... Are... Pretty much untouched outside of some kill power nerfs. Um, so yeah, that's that's my thoughts on Olimar. Hopefully he gets fixed. Thank you guys for watching.